Today we are going to talk about confidence intervals for means and proportions. Introduction. A confidence interval is the range of likely population values from which we might have obtained our estimate. Steps. There are multiple steps that we must follow in order to construct a confidence interval. The first step is to name what test you will be using. The second step is to list all the conditions that are needed before you start finding your confidence interval. The third step is to list the mechanics and how you are going to construct a confidence interval. And the fourth step is to interpret your data and your findings. Naming. When you name, you must list whether you are working with a one sample or two sample. In this case, we'll only be focusing on one sample. You must um, insert the percentage confidence interval that you will be working with. And you must also include whether you're going to be working with a t-test interval or a z-test interval and whether or not it's for means or proportions. So an example would be a one sample 95% confidence interval for t-test for means. For a t-test interval, it is only used for means and not for proportions. And when you use a t-interval, you are not given the standard deviation for the population. On the other hand, when you're Using a z-interval, it can be used for means or proportions. When you use it for means, you are given the standard deviation for the population. Conditions. You must always assume that the population is 10 times the sample size. So if your sample size is 65, you must assume that the population is greater than or equal to 650. You must also assume that the sample was randomly picked and assigned. Other words, you must um, you must assume that the sample was a simple random sample. Finally, you must assume that the data that you have was normally distributed. For means, if your sample size is greater than 25 or greater than 30, you can assume that your sample is large enough which, to be normally distributed. That leads to the central limit theorem. For proportions, n times p and n times p minus 1 is greater than 10, then you can assume that your data is normally distributed. In this case, n is your sample size and p is the proportion. Mechanics. For means, and when you are given a standard deviation of a sample, the formula is x plus or minus t times s over square root of n x in this case is the mean of the sample, t is the t critical value from table b in the formula sheets, n is the sample size, and s is the standard deviation of the sample. When you find t, you must know the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, which is df, is known as t minus 1, and that is in the list, and that is part of the list in table b when you're trying to find your t value. You use degrees of freedom to find this t-value. If the value for df is not in the table, you go to the first value that was lower than your actual value. So in the table, if it lists the df values as 5, 10, 15, 20, but your degrees of freedom that you found was, let's say, 26, then you would go to um, the value of 20 in the table in order to find your appropriate t-value. When your standard deviation of the population is given, the formula is x plus or minus z times sigma over square root of n. x in this case is the mean of the sample, z is the z critical value from table a. When you find the z critical value, it's 1 minus parentheses 1 minus the confidence interval percentage over 100 divided by 2. The confidence interval percentage divided by 100 is just the decimal form of the percentage. So if it was 95%, it would just be 0 0.95. And you always subtract everything in the parentheses from 1 because when you find the z values, it's always left of the percentage. n is the sample size, and sigma, in this case, is the standard deviation of the population. Now for proportions. The formula would be p plus or minus z times the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. p is the proportion, 
Z is the Z critical value from table A, and you find this value the same way as you would for means, and N is the sample size. Finally, we would have to interpret our data. When we interpret our data, we usually say we are, insert the confidence interval percentage that you are working with, confident that the true mean and proportion of what you are measuring is between the confidence interval that you actually found from the formulas. So an example for proportions, it would be we are 95% confident that the true proportion of heads for this coin is between 4, 0 0.88 and 0 0.675. We would expect on average, if the coin was fair, that 50% of heads would be shown and 50% of tails would be shown from this interval. For mean, we would say we are 95% confident that the true mean number of unoccupied seats is between 11.6 and 13.4 seats. That is all you need to know to find and to construct a confidence interval for means and proportions for one sample test.